Hi, I'm Mark Shargill. Ever since I began diving 42 years ago as a student at Hopkins Marine Station, I've been watching changes in Central California's ocean. What I saw in the first 20 years of my diving career made me concerned about human impact on marine life. So I became an advocate for marine reserves, areas like parks in the ocean. When California committed to creating a network of marine reserves, I volunteered on a state panel to choose sites for them. The work I helped with in Central California motivated me to publish books on other areas of the state as site selection moved onward. After years of work, scores of stakeholders succeeded in creating a first ever statewide network of marine protected areas. These are undersea jewels where fish and other animals grow big and reproduce in great numbers. I felt good knowing those areas would endure for decades and contribute to a healthier ocean. Eight years after Central California areas went into effect, divers began to see the biggest change we'd ever witnessed. Hordes of sea urchins invaded our lush kelp forests, chewing away the kelp at its base, setting entire ecosystems adrift and turning rocky reefs that used to be habitat for a tremendous diversity of life into something like underwater deserts. Okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is Jose Montes. I've been a recreational fisherman in Monterey Bay for over 30 years. And I've come to acknowledge how important it is to have a healthy kelp forest in the bay. Uh, it serves as a refuge for small rockfish, uh, food for abalone, a habitat for white sea bass, ling cod, and other fish. And uh, I've noticed that in recent years, there's been an explosion of ur urchin population that's uh, kind of destroyed a lot of the kelp. And I've noticed the difference. Uh, trolling, I used to troll along the edges of the kelp beds that have well-defined edges. Now the kelp is just scattered, sporadic. Uh, I've noticed also in recent years that the white sea bass catch has gone down dramatically and that's because they use the kelp beds as habitat when they're not out foraging for food. Uh, anything we can do to improve the health of the kelp is going to help uh, bring back the abundance of fish and marine life here in Monterey Bay. All right. Hi, how's it going? My name is Dane. I'm the manager of Aquarius Dive Shop. and. Uh, just a little bit about uh, the kelp forest here and our sea otter life. It's quite sad, but the last like 10 years uh, diving here in Monterey, uh, seeing a massive decline of all the kelp forests here, especially the otters around the population. I mean, it's something I love seeing, but also for all of our clients to come in from all around the world here. The number one thing they want to see is, hey, you want to see our giant kelp forest? Also besides that, the cute little otters. So it's kind of, you're seeing people that are coming back year after year that are you know not getting that same experience as they had last time and that's a little bit hard but you know we still give them a good experience of the beautiful diving we have here in Monterey but it's just it's crazy seeing these kelp forests that I used to see eight years ago and now it's just kind of barren just urchins and not as much that thickness of that kelp we still got some places that are absolutely amazing but it's just you see that massive decline in it they're just not as thick as they used to be in I'm hoping that it comes back to the day it used to be. My name is Mary Jo Nelson. I am owner operator of the dive vessel Beach Hopper 2. Um, the kelp forest for us is the one of the biggest draws to Monterey. I get customers that call from all around the world requesting to dive in the kelp and international uh, divers, people that travel here is probably a third of my, my clients. I have customers calling from all around the world uh, requesting to dive in the kelp and uh, I actually feel quite bad when they call because they ask about diving in the kelp when I tell them you know it's kind of slowly deteriorating in our area. The, the kelp forest is the biggest draw. I actually have to get them to substitute diving in the kelp with something else to keep them coming this way for uh, you know their holidays vacations you know whatever. my name is Adam Lester I work for Bamber Reef Enterprises in Monterey 
how does the kelp affect our business? Well, we have a great number of people who travel from not only locally, but all over the planet to dive in Monterey to see the kelp forest. Without the kelp forest, these people wouldn't travel to Monterey um, to visit our store and we wouldn't be able to stay open. And that's less hotel bookings, that's less people in the restaurants, and that's less people in our store. So my name is Art CV. I'm with Monterey Abalone Company, and our business is to farm uh, red abalone in cages here under the wharf, and we rely on uh, feeding them uh, wild harvested seaweed uh, to grow them, and uh, we feed them every week. And uh, we could not do this uh, business if we did not have uh, a supply of kelp. And uh, we have been here for 30 years uh, harvesting kelp. Uh, we we care very much, very deeply about the kelp. Sea otters feast on abalone when they can find them. They also avidly consume crabs, scallops, and other shellfish found in the kelp forest. Amazingly, otters enthusiastically go after sea urchins that live in kelp forests where the urchins are well fed. But in urchin barrens, the urchins have so little food, having eaten all the kelp, that they're emaciated and offer too little nourishment for an otter to bother with. On the open coast, otters prefer to nap in kelp, forage in kelp, and raise their pups in kelp. Urchin barons, on the other hand, offer them little to no food and no anchorage. Urchin barons won't make it easier for anyone to make a living, but how widespread is the problem? Urchins have taken over patches of rocky bottom from east of the Monterey Harbor, across the Monterey Pacific Grove shoreline, all the way around the Monterey Peninsula, through Carmel Bay, across the Point Lobos Reserve, and down into Big Sur country. One might wonder, what have they done to the kelp forests that have historically attracted visitors to the Monterey area? Compare these satellite views the first one taken in 2007, about seven or eight years before the urchin blight began, to this one taken in 2017 after it was already well underway. You can see that here along the Cannery Row shore, the kelp is essentially gone. At the location of the aquarium, Hopkins Marine Station, in the Marine Reserve, between Hopkins Marine Station and Lover's Point, and all the way around Point Pinos, kelp is all but gone. Doctoral candidate Josh Smith at UC Santa Cruz is the only researcher we know of working on the problem. One component of Smith's work has been to survey the density of giant kelp, as well as many other parameters. Smith graphed his own data to show the change in just the one year between 2018 and 2019. We can see new losses of kelp in front of Cannery Row from the west side of the Hopkins Marine Station Reserve. Kelp is already long gone from the reserve between Lover's Point and Hopkins, and there are new losses around Point Pinos. While Josh Smith was surveying kelp, volunteer reef check divers were counting sea urchins. At numerous locations around the Monterey Peninsula, down into Carmel and beyond, they documented the explosive growth of the urchin population between 2013 and 2016. Let's rewind and have another look at that time series. In the years since 2016, urchins have become more dense and more widespread. This graph displays the same data, showing us that each reef check survey patch, about the size of a small apartment, averaged more than 500 urchins. Disappearing kelp forests are already impacting many businesses in the area. Hello, my name is Sandra Cadera and I own La Dolce Vita Home and Garden Ideas, which is right behind me here on Cannery Row, beautiful Steinbeck Plaza. And how is the lack of sea otters and lack of kelp affecting your tourist business here in Monterey? I would say quite a bit because people come all the time asking me, where are the sea otters? Where are the sea otters? And I keep saying they're right out there and. I never really knew until uh, it was explained to me wh what's going on with them. And it is a very important aspect because people do come from all over the world to see these sea otters. Urchin barons first appeared in Southern California more than 25 years ago. 
To date, we are aware of none where the lush kelp forest that was once there has been restored naturally. Good science by Reef Check's volunteer divers helps to explain why. In 2019, they documented a new cohort of young urchins joining their progenitors on the reefs in Monterey. How a species that is so food limited can reproduce remains a biological mystery. In Sonoma and Mendocino counties, where the urchin outbreak first garnered attention, they've caused the starvation of most of the abalone population, putting an end to a sport fishery that's gone on for decades, we hope only temporarily. State officials are just now recognizing that the situation in Central California is every bit as serious as it is to the north. But regulations put in place to keep people from throwing ecosystems out of balance are keeping divers from even attempting to restore balance here. The most general regulations prevent anyone from taking more than a reasonable number of invertebrates, which include sea urchins, in any single day. But as you may have noticed earlier, the average density of urchins in a barren is over 20 per square meter. An area the size of your dining table could contain hundreds. Around the peninsula, the only estimate we have suggests the urchin population is well beyond 100 million. In order to allow divers to clear even experimental test patches of a few acres, the Fish and Game Commission will need to make an exception in Monterey County, similar to the one that's already been passed for Northern California. When asked to do that in 2019, they refused. As of this moment, a second request is pending. But we need your help in convincing the Fish and Game Commission that this is too important to put off any longer. Hello, my name is John Richardson. I own uh, Monterey Bay Scuba. And the effects that the uh, urchins have had um, on scuba diving are pretty significant. Uh, we have people come of uh, tourism all over the world to dive the kelp forest here. And obviously over the last few years they've been getting depleted. So I think the best thing that we can do is try to take care of the urgent population as soon as possible to help restore this great tourism of diving here in Monterey. As a part of this process, we would, it would be wonderful for our company to be uh, one of the companies, uh, especially along Cannery Row here, being a part of the removal of the uh, urchins. It would bring more business into our company and also improve the actual marine environment. So uh, the faster we can do that, the better off we'll be. One reason for the Commission's reluctance may be the great number of marine protected areas that wrap around the Monterey Peninsula. When they went into effect in 2007, they were the first step in what may be California's, and for that matter, America's, greatest achievements in marine conservation. I remain proud to this day knowing that I had a hand in protecting kelp forests and every other type of habitat on California's coast. The enormous investment that the state put into establishing these areas and then into monitoring them began to show results much faster than anyone ever expected. Marine life is more diverse, more numerous, grows bigger, and reproduces in greater numbers inside of marine protected areas. The stakeholder group that I served on was instructed to draw these areas such that they contained key representative habitats. When it came to kelp forest in Central California, we did a remarkably good job. In fact, from the Monterey Harbor out to Point Pinos and down coast beyond Point Lobos to Yankee Point, the only kelp forests or reefs that used to be kelp forest accessible from shore are within marine protected areas. Looking at a map, there appear to be exceptions in the southwest corner of the Monterey Peninsula. But the roads there are controlled by the Pebble Beach Company, which charges a toll. The shoreline is either exposed to weather facing to the west, or facing to the southwest is such high cliffs that it's impossible to reach the water. East of the harbor, the ridge of shale known as Tanger's Reef used to support live kelp, but is now overrun by urchins. It is a proposed study site, but the rest of the region has granite bottom, and the shale there means that conclusions drawn there may not apply elsewhere. If we are to retain or restore any of Central California's iconic kelp forest, the best available science tells us we're going to have to do it ourselves, 
and we're going to have to do much of that work inside of marine protected areas. That's not what we expected when we created those areas. But neither did we expect invasive species to start overrunning them or native species to radically shift their behavior pattern so as to destroy the very ecosystem that used to feed them. Marine protected areas are protected from degradation by human activities. Human beings may or may not have done something that triggered this urchin outbreak, but clearly it is urchins and not people that are clear-cutting the kelp forest. That leaves us with a stark, though uncomfortable choice, either to adapt our management in a way that conserves their very nature, or to watch that nature disappear. Uh, my name is J.D. Ross. I run the lightboat sweeper and I fish squid. And uh, I think the kelp's really important. I feel like it's the nursery uh, for a lot of different species. The squid get in there and they can lay their eggs. And uh, they're protected from, you know, predators, fishermen, everything. So the eggs are safe in there and all the other, you know, baby fish. And uh, yeah, we've really noticed it disappear through the El Nino and with the more so the urchins have been eating it. So yeah, um, I know it's really important that we, we keep the kelp forest. And I don't know how you stop them from disappearing, but. The fishing fleet has been out in front of Cannery Row for the last five weeks. We are not allowed to restore that kelp bed in front of that area so that there is the biodiversity necessary for them to keep fishing. We have a team of divers ready to execute an experimental protocol to remove the urchins from this area and to restore the kelp under the direction of Reef Check California and the Department of Fish and Wildlife. We're just looking for the permission to do it. Central California's giant kelp forests need help. The sea otters that used to feed on a few of the 1,500 species that grew in them need help. There's little reason to think those kelp forests can recover on their own. The only effort to restore giant kelp forests is from a small band of unfunded volunteer divers standing by to develop a protocol that will end the takeover of gnawing sea urchins. But so far, the California Fish and Game Commission makes their work criminal behavior. The first piece of help we need is a change in the law specific to allow the culling of urchins in Monterey County. If those citizen scientist divers can find a way to restore kelp forests where urchins have clear cut them, then their efforts will need to be multiplied, backed with funding and spread across a much wider area. If we don't do these things, the only alternative is to stand idly by while the giant kelp forests we thought we'd protected are destroyed.